you on live. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, thanks for the warning. <laughs> okay. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> I'm just trying to wave at Yaku to see if the radio is working because we haven't heard anything from him, and then he just says, Oh, we're live. Okay. Awesome. Right then. <laughs> what a good start to the morning, uh, this afternoon. Welcome on board. And it is like an oven here at Juma Game Reserve. It, we are just, wow, it's, it, it's hard to explain. I think you actually had the right terminology the other day. It's as if you've put the oven on and you've opened the door and that hot air rushes at you and it literally is that hot air now. I can feel it coming over from this, this side. But uh, it's just been building over, over the morning. It was actually quite pleasant this morning and then straight into the afternoon sort of really building I can actually feel it inside my room and I had the doors closed the fan on and just wasn't really doing too much unfortunately but yeah there is as uh, Mark was just pointing out then the front coming in from the south which is where we get most of our weather from but I wonder if it's going to do like it did the other day build and build and build and threaten and threaten and threaten and then nothing um, but yes not too much out here on the open area but I am wanting to go and see if we can uh, catch up with the Cubs and Karula. Apparently they were seen this morning on Voitel Axis and Albury's Road Junction. So I am going to head up that way. It's going to be very unlikely they're going to be moving, but I do want to see if they are there, if they've got a kill or anything like that. Um, and then hopefully come back there a little bit later on. So let's get going. Let's see what we can go and find. My name's Tara, by the way. Mark is on camera. Yaku is back in final control. Ooh, buzz off. I don't want you buzzing around my leg. Go away. Good afternoon, all stations, uh, Tara Mobile. Good afternoon. I waved to you, you didn't wave back. <laughs> Your eyes were forward, I was just going out of the driveway. Sure. Sorry dude, uh, you there's something wrong with your radio. Um, I saw you heading up towards Orbis Road, can I come and join you? Yeah, I just come up behind you, see your pin door, and the little boy is lying next to the road, and when people can't find darling lady and her that. So, so she does have a bamba? No, no, she had a She was stopping herself on a baby in this morning. Oh, okay. She was stopping at her mom and her brother. So oh, wow. Yeah, something like that. But I'll let you know. Copy that, thank you. Oh, I think we have just missed Shavinzi's first kill. My word. So just, you know, sorry, I thought Graham was going to start talking again. Apparently, um, Shavinzi was feeding on a baby in part of this morning and keeping her mother and brother at bay. So it sounds like she possibly made a first kill on a baby in parlor. Which is ba what, what we were actually saying. With these baby in parlor, they're going to be, unfortunately, an easy target for the young cubs to learn on and they're small enough to manage and naive enough especially if they don't stick close to mum I wonder if that was where they were first seen this morning there's a lot of turning in the road here 
as well. Sorry? Okay, he said that he was lying close to the road, so maybe he's here. I think they did see east. They did say east of Aubrey's Road. Yeah. Uh, Yaku, can you do me a favor and just speak on the, the radio for me? On channel 1. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good, good. Okay, well, let's just try going in where these... trucks go off. He did say it was close to the road, unless he's moved further back. further up. I think Graham said he did go in to go and look around for her. Did kill this morning? Hmm. I doubt, I doubt there's going to be much left. Was he to the big Shadulu, uh, close to where the Mkons was going into the Shatin? Guys, we're going to the back. You should come across and press the track for the next road. I'm just stretching around for her, but I'm heading back to where he was now. Yeah. Okay, I'm heading back to the road from where you heard me, you need to see the road behind me. It's really close to the road. Okay, so I'm very close to the road. the other tracks is yeah oh there he is sure <laughs> go straight past him I block the whole road. Can you see him through the bush there? Back a bit more. Back a bit more. Yeah, good. Hello, beautiful boy. <laughs> Strove straight past him. <laughs> Ach well.
And I don't think, have I actually, I don't think I've said the name of this animal yet. I've called them by the names, but I don't think I've actually said the name. So if I haven't said the name, guys, please help me to ID what animal this is. But I do rely on you guys to actually tell me if I have actually said it or not. <coughs> It's not a happy bunny. Awesome, thanks Binky. Giving the leopard. Fantastic. It is a leopard. Did anyone come back with cheetah? What has happened? Yeah. It's so smooth, but it's just right. Oh. Yeah, if anybody uh, ID'd him. Cam, Roy, Robin. <laughs> Saying Shivambalana. Yes, it is. Oh boy. And he's getting so big now. He's a month, uh, a year old this year. This month. <laughs> okay, I put my brain back in my head. He is a year old this month. Never mind my teeth falling out. beautiful boy. The easiest way I tell this little boy, and I'm gonna have to find something else, but just the two whisk the two spots above his whisker line helps to identify him as Shivambalana. His sister actually has an upside down V which is quite distinctive. And I'll probably continue to use that, but he's his is not as distinctive from other leopards. Um, ruler actually has three spots and it's sometimes um, diff you know if, if you have a quick look at Karula she actually does look on that lower part of her face the same as Shivambalana and as he grows up we'll say definitely going to start looking for something else <laughs>
So he even has a little Y in the corner of his eye, like his brother, Mishibi. And he has it on one eye, on the right eye, I think. just goes to show though how easily you can miss a leopard and he's barely what 10 10 12 meters from the road and both of us missed him he was lying flat 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 but if anybody said that he was a cheetah nice try <laughs> But if you look on his body, he's got those beautiful rosettes, and cheetahs have full black spots all over the body. And now he's got his head up, you can see there's no black tear marks down his face. And those are the two main things that you can look for in a che uh, between a cheetah and a, a leopard. As you can see, he is on the ground, and leopards will spend time on the ground. In fact, here in the Sabi Sands, they seem to spend more time on the ground than they do in the trees. The only time you really see them in the trees is if they've got a very big kill. And even then, quite often they'll sleep on the ground unless there is hyenas around. There's very prominent badge markings like Mishu. Not quite the same, but almost. Yeah, he definitely does have the look of his brother about him. Now it is also a myth that cheetahs can't climb trees. They're not able to climb trees in the way that leopards are able to climb trees. Their limbs just aren't built for that, and the whole body structure is just not built for that. But if there's a fork in a tree, a fairly low down, you know, sort of about a metre and a half, it doesn't have to be that low, but sort of they can run and, and take a leap into it. And it is possible to see cheetahs in trees. I've even seen a, a fantastic picture of five cubs and a female all in one tree. It's incredible. I've witnessed it a couple of times myself with male cheetah actually jumping into trees and I say it was a fork about a metre, metre and a half up and they went in, came out, and in, came out. It was almost as if they were doing the exercising. But they're actually using it to scout the area. And they'll often use termite mounds to stand on and what they've actually taken doing up in the Serengeti is standing or sitting on the bonnets of cars because it is just so flat and they just use that elevation just to have a good look around but if you do see them walking cheetahs are very slender cats streamline very long legs and that actually increases the stride so they can cover a lot more ground in a very short space of time. The long legs. And there's a lot more movement actually in their chest with the stockier cats with the ambush, stalk and ambush cats like the leopard and the lion. They're a lot more rigid in their chest and that also allows them to to climb trees a lot better and the bones in the in the chest as well are quite, quite short whereas in the cheetah they're, they're quite long again to try and increase that stride. And even their collarbones are slightly detached actually it's, it's it's cartilage rather than bone around that area and that gives them a lot more flexibility and if you ever watch a cheetah chasing after its prey it can 
turn on a dime. It's incredible to see. And they can weave this way and that as they chase after their prey. And what they're trying to do is actually chase down their prey and trip up their back legs and they'll, they'll swipe at it with the paw. And the prey will fall, they lose the legs, they fall and that's when the cheetah can then turn extremely tightly and then go in for the kill. And the leopards have to use the foliage for cover and they get as close as they can and then pounce. Now having said that, the cheetah do still need to get fairly close to be successful. They have to get within 30 meters for it to end in a successful hunt. But apparently a little bit more successful than leopards are at their kills. So what about you Shivambalana? Are you going to go and get, catch your dinner tonight? I'm still relying on mum. But who knows, maybe he's already made his first kill and we don't we we don't know about it. I think right from where go, Shavinzi, his sister, seems to have taken more initiative when it comes to things like that. He tends to sit back. Well I'll say first kill. I mean first big kill. We did see him eating a squirrel the other day and I think he would have caught that himself. I think he would have stolen it from his sister. Shame he's battling, eh? Can't be pleasant for them. Love to know what goes through their mind. Will it ever end? Anybody just have any questions this afternoon? I'm dressed to write into his questions at juma.com. And apologies for not getting back to some people with some of their emails. I have been a little bit busy today. But hopefully I should get around to doing them tomorrow. Why do you keep looking over here, little one? Did your mum go off this way?
Are there any questions there, Yaku? No. Okay. I think we're going to be leaving little Shivambalana. I'd love to stay with him. But I think in this heat, he seems like he's not happy, but <laughs> quite content to stay in the shade. Good afternoon, everybody. Mark here in Final Control. Thanks for your patience. We've had a little bit of a power issue here called power dipped, and because power dipped, everything switched off briefly, and we've had to run the generator for a little while, but everything seems to be up and running again. And hopefully sound is coming through right now, and hopefully picture two, and we'll be back on drive shortly. Thanks for your patience. Welcome back everybody. Sorry about the delay. Uh, we had a short uh, power outage, so we uh, went back just to give Yaku a hand starting everything up. It actually looked like he did quite well. Got a lot of things going. Oh, hello Zebra. But um, as, soon as, as soon as the generator was started, the power actually came back. So we just had to make sure everything was working. We might have some more power outages during the drive. I have this feeling. We had two today. This is the third one. And it was flickering at some stage as well. I think Joburg's also been having power outages down there. I do wonder if it's this front coming in. It's causing problems elsewhere. It's almost as if there's one cable, and when there's a, s a storm brewing, the exposed cable, wherever it is, causes all this problem, and I wonder if it's the same cable every time. <laughs> I'd love to know what actually causes it. I really would. Okay, I think we are going to go and check out Treehouse Dam, see what's going on down there, maybe Twin Dams. We'll have another look around a little bit later for the leopards. Yeah, you guys going to let us get a little bit close to you? Hello. Now females are supposed to have a thick stripe under the belly and actually I don't know if we can see through this female on the right, she's got a very thick stripe. Males are supposed to have a thin stripe on the belly. It's supposed to be one of the few ways that you can tell the sex of a zebra without looking at the normal pieces. That mother and son together, you can see the difference. Can you? I can't see him on the no, left. I'm saying, I'm zoomed in so that. Oh, you can actually see. Oh, nice. the tail, you can actually see that just under the tail, she's a lot. The black is a lot mm. broader than his. But I can see it definitely between her belly or between her legs and on her belly. <laughs> no, on her, on her. I can't see the stallions until I was actually looking at the stallion on the right. I think that's her son, that's cold. Yeah, it could be. Because I've seen them a few times now. Yeah. Could well be. The eye's looking a little bit, eh? Oh, is this the one that you saw the other day? Now I'm seeing a weepy eye, yeah. 
This is the one that has the scar down the side, isn't it? Is that the Pardon? same one? Same one with the scar down the side. Yeah, and the red weeping eye. Mm. Yeah, I'm seeing the weeping eye now. Oh, it's just turned around. Yeah, it's looking a lot better. Maybe she had something in her eye and Discharge was just trying to get rid of it. If anybody is sitting at home would like to send through their favourite zebra fact. Yeah, it'll be quite fun to try out today. Did it with giraffe and an elephant. If anyone's got any any interesting zebra facts you'd like to share with us, or your favourite zebra fact, questions at juma dot com, and Yak will be able to send them through to me. See what interesting facts we get back today on the zebra. I'm seeing now what, who was it was asking about the stripes not matching? Mm, there was a couple of people actually. Yeah. It's not that they're not matching, it's just the way it is. Oh, that, wi that slight wave in the, in the body, in the... No, no, I mean him, on that stallion's flank, left flank. Oh, the stallion? No, I think it was the female, wasn't it? I don't know. I think we were watching the female and they were talking about the previous zebra. Mm. Yeah, it's got quite a, a peculiar pattern though, it's quite it pretty. That little patch there in yeah. behind his shoulder. That's very pretty. Looks like he's trying to regurgitate his food. You're not a ruminant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can definitely do with a tail. Ah, thanks, Roy. I was saying zebras are black with white stripes. Apparently, according to research, fairly recent research, that statement is true. Apparently, when they're developing as young foals in the womb, the black coloration is there first, and then the white develops afterwards. Odd, I've always thought they were white with black stripes, because the amount of white on the body. But Apparently not. Thanks, Roy. What would it be like to have a tail? It'd be very handy. Might get in the way on occasion. Mind if we sh share your shade, lady? Oh, is it not that scar there? This looks like she's on, a, on her middle. Yeah, just on the. I just got a few, well, few scratch marks. No, maybe it wasn't that then. Well, I did see that one when we first saw, and mm. was the, the, both her and the little boy were next to her. Maybe it was that one. bristles on the chin. <laughs> Quite velvety actually around the, the, the nose. Oh nice! Got the buffalo weaver. Are we able to have a look at the buffalo weaver? It's not really been out and about to really show people. I'm actually amazed somebody got the ID the other day. From not a great view of it. But the black bill. No? The red bill and the black body. How to distinguish it? And st certainly during the summer time, that 
red bill really comes out in all its glory. Remember the oxpecker is, is brown in colour rather than black. And very rarely you'll see an oxpecker walking around like that. Because the buffalo weaver is looking for seeds, maybe insects in the short grass. Whereas the oxpecker goes for the ticks and the bodily fluids of the animals. And if you see them off the animal it's either to dust bathe or to drink if you see it on the ground. Very rarely, as I say, you'll see it walking around like yep, the buffalo weavers do. Oh, who have we got there on the tree? Bucktail Drongo. Not enjoying the heat apparently. In a weather like this, you're going to see the birds with the mouths open trying to cool off. Okay. Thank you, lady. Sorry, the, the, just after that last part, um, they dissipate what? Thanks, Diane. I've not heard the percentage before. Apparently, their shiny coats dissipate 70% of the heat. And that's possibly got a lot to do with the white, the white stripes, because white actually reflects heat. Black absorbs the heat. With there being quite a lot of white in the body. And the shine, shiny surface tends to reflect the heat and matte surfaces tend to absorb the heat. So the shine and the white combination. But I didn't realise it was 70% that they deflect. Thanks, Diane. Speaking to Graham actually, um, just as we lost you, and Graham said that he thinks Karula made the kill after all. Apparently he saw drag marks and it looks like she might have had a, a bit and then Shavinzi got hold of it. So we, we can um, stop cheering for Shavinzi for the time being. <laughs> I'm sure she'll be successful in her own right at some stage. I honestly thought she was capable of it now. She probably is. Possibly is. So it still remains fairly equal. In fact, we've actually seen Siobhan Balana be more successful than his sister at this stage. So we haven't really seen her catch anything. We've seen her chase things. We haven't seen her catch anything. I say she seems to be the more eager of the two to try. I'm going first! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, will do. I'm heading down towards Treehouse Dam, Twin Dam's that area. down towards Philemon's dip and the pump house. <laughs> so, what well, is that? Zebras have the prettiest... I want to make sure I've got the right word. The prettiest butt. <laughs> Eyes on Donna. I think you're right there. I'm definitely right there. <laughs> uh, these stripes make my bum look big. Got speed. 
Apparently, an adult zebra can run about 40 miles per hour. And a baby zebra can run after an hour of being born. <laughs> So I'm on drive 15 of the checklist. So keeping a lookout for any possible ticks that I haven't got on my list yet. This should be a good one for reptiles. I'm going to try and keep a good lookout for reptiles. I was hoping to find some elephants swimming. change a plan a little bit. Okay, let's still check out Treehouse and then maybe we should head up towards the Hyena Den via Rebecca's Road. Breasted bush strike the other day. So we ID'd it by sound and not really had a great sight of it. So we'll get down to the dam and I'll show you a picture of it for those who are not sure what it looks like. So I think, fortunately, the orange breasted bush strike that was sitting in the tree is no longer nesting there. I wonder if she got disturbed too much. I was quite surprised when we saw her actually making the nest in the first place. Every bit of elephant dung is a potential tortoise. Every termite mound is a potential sitting spot for a snake or a lizard. Trunk of the tree. How's it, Drongo?
zebra tracks. see it from that side. We really need to put our eyes in today. Oh yes, I saw that. Where did you... I saw the bubbles down here of this little guy. Can you see it? Oh, awesome. Okay, we have the next ID. For this afternoon. Another bird. Unfortunately, there's a lot more birds than there are mammals. Oh, I have. Striped cuckoo. I was hoping it was going to be the other one. Yeah, me too. Okay, I'm just in the wrong spot. I'm going to just try and move. But uh, there is a bird in this tree that I want. This one in front of you? Yeah. No, not this one. The bright one. I'm going to pull forward a little bit and hopefully we'll get out the glare of the sun a little bit. Nice, striped cuckoo. Ooh. Now is that his mate down at the bottom there? Okay, so if we stop here. Who do you want? The dark one at the bottom? That could be. I oh, know that is mate, I think. One of the bright ones, I saw one sitting in the tree there. It's right in front of us. In full voice. Sorry, and it one could one? be, he's bobbing around above the, uh, the cookie. Uh -huh. Let's see. One thing I like about the photographic guide of the birds is that it has the number of eggs a bird lays and usually where they lay the eggs. It's quite a nice quick reference guide. Diet of the, the bird as well. But also for the cuckoos, because I am terrible at, at remembering who lays what where. I thought the stripes might be brood parasites of the weavers, but they're not. Let's try and remember who it is. I suppose it does make sense because they are quite large. You find it difficult to lay the egg in there. Having said that, the bird that does lay the eggs. Where are you? The Deirdrix cuckoo. That's also quite a large bird actually. Parasite of the weavers, bishops and sparrows. I knew it was a big bird, I just couldn't remember which one. So the striped goes for babblers mostly. I just thought with both of them being here. Did we get a good view of it? The um yeah. hmm? sort of, but kind the striped cuckoo. Oh no, the, uh, this one. Yeah. The yellow one. Yeah. There's one it just in front of us. Yeah. I saw it down to its nest, I'm waiting for it to come out. But it didn't. Maybe it did before I saw. So I've got so much glare coming off the water, I can't hardly see this tree. Oh, there it is. So I'm 
hoping you guys know this bird. Okay, well, let me move forward a bit. Let me move forward. Don't panic. Move forward. Sorry, I'll keep an eye out, see if we can get the other bird again. That floppy ear is busy <coughs> wallowing in the mud there. I'm actually quite surprised we don't see leopards do that more often. It just goes to show, even though hyenas may hunt the impala, they might not really hunt impala that much here. All well, these impala haven't had much experience of the the hyenas hunting them here. Because they don't really seem to be too bothered. Now, if this was a leopard lying here, there would be alarm calling by now. Now, it is possible they haven't seen her, but one female has now. And you can see, not even an alarm call. She just watched, looked, and walked away. Who was asking about the snakes? Joe. Hi, Joe. Good afternoon to you. And thank you very much, RC. Apparently you did get the bird. RC's managed to ID it. So thanks, RC, for the southern mast weaver, which it was. I've got the European bee eaters taking a bath. <laughs> Beautiful. They're dipping themselves in the water. But Jojo wants to know are the nests protected from snakes? Not really. A boom slang will be able to find its way into those nests. But that is one of the reasons why they do use thorn trees a lot. They use the thorn trees to try and keep predators from raiding the nests. But also the thorn trees help to hold the nest and especially in strong winds and strong uh, in the storms because that's when they do actually build the nests is, is during the rainy season. And if they aren't built to to really be secure enough on the branch then those nests are going to drop regardless of whether there's a chick in there or not and that's one of the things that the females are going to be looking for when she chooses her mate and the females will actually come to the nest inspect it and if she likes what she sees then she will mate with the male and she will take that nest and the male will then go on to make a new nest and invite a new female to come and inspect it but it is com completely up to you the female if she wants to mate with him or not and if he doesn't make a decent enough nest then he might destroy it or she might destroy it I've got the got somebody. The camera now. got the female the female oh weaver. the female weaver oh okay There's somebody else right over the side drinking. Who are you? Oh, 
the Bulldox Pecker. Just looking funny. You'll notice the female does look very different to the male. This is one of those birds where the females are quite drab in colour, the males are quite stunning. And that's all to do with trying to attract as many females as possible. The females are the sole providers for the brood. And that's one of the reasons why she'll be drab in colour because she's going to have to camouflage and hide away from predators. Whereas the male, all he has to do is try to attract the female. So if he sh he looks bright and, and shows off those beautiful colours to a female, then he must be quite attractive and he must be quite strong because if he's that bright and that colourful and he sticks out to predators, almost says, hello, I'm here. And if he can still survive and carry on building nests, then he's got to be attractive and her chicks are possibly going to have a better chance of survival with him than maybe a male who's not that bright. He's, he's quite dull in colour. And it's also thought that the pigment, the yellow pigment, the carotenoids, are uh, actually responsible for decay of the flight muscle. And it is possible that there's this trade-off between being too bright and having uh, damage to the flight muscles and not being bright enough. It's all about trying to get a mate and trying to secure a mate and secure your your future in the form of offspring. That floppy ear is just quite happy just finding a nice cool spot. I'm actually surprised she hasn't found herself a bit of shade. She looks quite content there. In here the cuckoo's calling. Back on top of here. Oh. Be on him. Hmm? So I was back on floppy here, but I should be on him like here. I don't know if we can actually see him. Can you see him under the branches? Uh, sort of, yeah, just. A little bit. She looks like she's in La La Land. Sweet dreams, floppy ear. Wonder what the kids are doing. They're probably in the hole, actually. Be nice and cool in the termite mound. Oh, who's that for? Hi Roy, good afternoon to you. Wanting to know, do I think Treehouse Dam and Gary Dam are the most active for wildlife? All the dams can be. Um, they, it's funny, they go through cycles. Sometimes you can come to Treehouse and there's nothing going on. And then sometimes it seems everything is going on at Treehouse. And the same with Buffalo Suck, sometimes everything's going on that side and there's nothing going on at other times. It's it's odd. Yeah, especially with a selection of dams in the area. The animals do have a selection, so we don't really see too much of the the waterhole effect where there's only one dam and all the animals come down to drink. Because there are several 
large water bodies. And so they do have a choice. And they will have their own routine. Whether it spans a few days or a few weeks, they'll have their own routine. And depending on how the routines overlap, will then dictate what is actually found here. With Floppy Ear, for example, um, we have seen her wallowing in mud further down on, on Chelapan in the, in the little pans there, actually just behind Chelapan on uh, Niala Road South. We've seen her with her previous cubs there. But now she's got cubs up, up at Zoe's Road. This could be a little bit more um, convenient for her. Although Gary Dam is pretty close. Maybe it's, you know, because there's a lot of activity maybe from elephants at that time. The hippos. <laughs> yeah, she's getting a little bit irritated with the hippo. The hippo's possibly getting a bit irritated with her presence there. So that were our presence. Okay, well let's leave the weavers and floppy ear and the hippo to it. Sort of shadow flying overhead. Hi Sarah, good afternoon to you. Wanting to know is floppy ear full or pregnant? Probably full. But she's already, she's got her two cubs. And they, we actually have been underestimating the age, I think, by a couple of months, two or three months. So they're probably just around a year old, because I've been thinking maybe about nine, nine months old for them. They might just be about a year old or so. And it'll probably be another year before she actually has more cubs. They can be dependent on her for about a year, year and a half. And then for her to fall pregnant again or for her to come back into estrus again might be two or three months after they've broken away from her. Because she can actually nurse them for a year, year and a half when I say they're dependent on her. They can continue to drink milk for that long. Whereas a leopard, even though the leopards, um, like Shvinzi, Shivambalana, are also about a year old. And actually I should have remembered that because I do remember now saying that Floppy Ears cubs were roughly about the same age as Karula's cubs. So I should have really remembered that. But anyway, the cubs, they will be, the cubs will be dependent on Karula possibly for another six months to a year but she's providing them with food rather than the milk at this stage um, they may be weaned see I'm wondering maybe we should go and check out twin dams maybe we should do that do twin dams and then head up towards Rebecca's road but yeah as I say they they can be weaned anywhere as early as three months. It may still take milk about seven months, but generally not more than that. That's for the leopard cubs. So quite a, a big difference there. Possibly because of the way that they live, the hyenas being quite sociable, but also uh, quite strict in a dominance hierarchy. And, and it's, it's quite a different social life to that of leopards. Leopards are quite solitary and that could have a lot to do with them having to, to be able to hunt and fend for themselves quite quickly. Sorry to say that again. Okay, yeah. 
Well, I thought you said the first time just didn't make any sense. <laughs> so brain's not computing this afternoon. So yes, that's why I don't think she is pregnant because the cubs are still drinking milk at this stage. We have seen her yesterday, day before, day before I think, drinking milk. So we do know that they are still highly dependable on her. But good afternoon to you, Chris. Welcome on board. And which Chris is it actually? Does, this, does it say which Chris? There's a few Chris's. Ah, uh, Miss Chris. Miss Chris from Louisiana. Good to hear from you, Miss Chris. Had in my head it was a different Chris. But wanting to know, is it usual for hyenas to lay in water? In this kind of heat, yes, they'll even go swimming in water. I've seen them a few times. I remember Treehouse Dam, no? Twin Dams. Catching a few hyenas, chasing each other in the water and sitting in the water and swimming in the water. That was with Patrick's drive. And also wallowing in the mud in the pans. Is there any more zebra facts that came through Yaku? Kathy! Thanks Kathy! Nice one. Oh, hello. Someone was saying the other day, I think it was Fred, Fred Poe, if you're on board, asking about the buffalo. Small number of them, Dugger boys. Zebra's mane stand up when they're well and flop over when they're unwell. Yes, they do. I'm not too sure why. There is a correlation there. Hello boys. Definitely how past for a buffalo. Hello. What are two boys up to? Understandable, really, why these boys get so grumpy. But I'm actually amazed that there's not really that many with mud on them. It does look like they have been wallowing, though. Wallowing the water rather than rolling around in the mud. dung beetles to play with. Lots of flies though. Lots and lots of flies.
Oh, yes. See, I forgot again. Hey, I don't know. Three, six, two. There we go. Bushrike, for those of you who weren't able to see it properly the other day. This one down at the bottom. Orange breasted bushrike. This very dark eye stripe that the grey headed bushrike doesn't have. You may get confused between the two. It goes. It's been a while since I've done the grey-headed, also known as the ghost bird. <laughs> it's a particular pitch. It's very monotonous, but beautiful, quite haunting. I'm going to head back up towards Rebecca's Road. There's the Dugger Boys without any Dugger on them move off into the bush. me thinking that big cloud is actually breaking up, but no. It's sort of swinging this way now. Hi Joe. Good morning to you. You know, good evening to you. I'm still in morning because I've missed the morning, you see. I'm wanting to know if Duggar boys are easy targets for lion because they walk alone, and they are. They, they can be fairly easy targets, but not an easy, an easy prey to go for. They, they're quite cantankerous and they're quite, quite large, usually old boys, well past their prime. So yes and no. Sorry, who's that from? Hi, Bruce. 
afternoon to you. And I hope the weather's nice over there in England, in Fleetwood. I'm wanting to know about tiger pug marks. You've heard them being called tiger pug marks and can that the same be said for leopards? I'm sure they could. I'm sure they could. Um, we usually use spore over here. Spore or track. Spore is the technical word. But pug marks, I have heard tiger tiger tracks being called pug marks. Probably just another name for them. I've got you. And scat is the technical word for dung. But as I say, for me, <laughs> saying elephant scat just doesn't quite sound right. Rhino scat. See now, carnivore scat, yes. Carnivore scat, it actually sounds right. But elephant or hippo or rhino scat. Dung, dung. That's the right word. Hmm. Can't see the vultures. I'm actually starting to feel the temperature just dip slightly. Can't believe it's that time already, sure. Dawdling a lot. Does someone put my clock forward? Never is that time. And my last argument for that, why dung should be called dung and not scat, is the dung beetle. If it was supposed to be called scat, why didn't they call it a scat beetle? <laughs> and that's my final, uh, final word <laughs> on the matter. It just doesn't hold. Hi to you, Joey. Long time no here. Hope you're well. If it's the same Joey that I'm thinking of, I hope so. Otherwise, there's going to be a new Joey going. She's crazy. Well, I suppose you would be right, actually. But yes. Hi to you, Joey. Huge spider web right off the floor, eh? with the uh, sun coming through, but it's just going to be a little bit too far. Yeah, go ahead. Ooh. Sorry, Drongo. A negative, there were some on consoles, but they didn't look particularly fresh. Uh, filaments cut line heading north. Alrighty, thanks. Joey, you welcome. Wants to know if the Duggar boys are an actual special herd and where do they get the name Duggar from. And it was funny, I was actually going to talk about that and they just disappeared on me. But Duggar is Zulu for, for mud. 
And generally, in this kind of weather, you find them rolling in mud, as I was saying earlier. But they obviously opted for the water instead. Maybe through the lack of mud being there, it wasn't too much for them to roll around in. That could have something to do with it. Too much effort to start digging around in the mud. But they are basically old males who have been pushed out of the group. Well, not pushed, left the group. So they'll tend to follow the herd and keep up with the herd. And especially as prime bulls, they'll stay with the herd probably all year round. Some of them might leave and form a little batch of the group outside the breeding season. You get some males actually staying with the herd all year round. But then life just gets a little bit too much for the old boys. And they just want a slower, slower pace in life. Their teeth become very worn. So they opt for maybe softer vegetation, closer to rivers or dams. they live out their lives either alone or in a small group you don't really see them that, that was quite a big group of dogger boys you don't really see more than 10 or 15 It'd be quite unusual if you do that probably is a possibility but not the norm Ooh, who are you? Are you able to get the little bird in the tree? I don't know who you are Bye bye, birdie. Listen. Huh? Listen. Yeah, I didn't see it. Well, when I set up, it flew away. Ah. No, it didn't. Didn't stay long enough. Oh wow! Look at that. Sure. Oh, I can hear a green pigeon. That's one I can't do. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's actually moving quite fast as well. Oh, congratulations, Kimmy. Wow. And what a beautiful, beautiful... Uh, Hopefully screenshot that you can have to celebrate. <laughs> but congratulations, Kimmy, on your engagement. Kimmy who? Kimmy, Kimmy, Kimmy. Okay. Yeah. You mean she betrayed me? <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> now that's fantastic news, Kimmy. Awesome. And I hope you have a fantastic future together. Okay. It'd be nice to do time lapse on that thing. Yeah, it would, eh? We'll sit here a couple of hours. Okay. Let's see if we can catch up with the pachyderms. Kimmy. There's only one Kimmy. Kimmy's here, Kimmy.
reptiles. I'm trying. Very, very trying. I almost told me so. And I do have to show you this. Because when Mark went into town, he managed to bring back the paper. Not just any paper, but the Kruger to Canyon, which some of you might recognize the name, because this is the article that we actually had written for us by Diane. I wonder if Diane's actually on board, Diane Tippingwoods. Beautiful last name, actually. But look, we actually made front page. How awesome is that? We made front page on the Kruger to Canyon. This is a free paper. And all the, basically all the towns in the area, you can pick up this. And I think it's a weekly paper, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's Thursday, a week, weekly Friday. paper. So hopefully a lot of people would have seen this. A lot of tourists would have seen this because Hudsprayt is the hub of activity. It's, it's one of those little dorpies, little towns. But it's, it's basically the gate through into Kruger, one of the gates through into Kruger, if you go through Orpen. Gateway. Uh, gateways, yeah. And it continues on. Where does it continue on? It continues oh, yeah. on page oh, three. The oh, there it is. Uh, they didn't have the... they had two pictures on the virtual... Go back to the cover, I want to show you really the date, because there's a very special date in the paper as well. Oh, okay. no, I was just looking to see if we had the... Cause they, on the on the website they had the other picture as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Where's the date? So, yeah. The 11th of November 2011. That is pretty special. That is pretty special. Tenth year, they're getting onto their tenth anniversary. So that they've been. But I think that is pretty special. Well done, everybody. And certainly, oh, oh, and I actually forgot to mention, all the money has been transferred now into the bank accounts of. The two organisations that are going to benefit from that 30,000 rand th that was raised and I'm sure the, the number is actually rising. I know there's been a few people that have said they've already donated. So thank you once again. That really was something quite awesome that came out of, out of these live drives. And I think I'd actually like to, to speak to some of the... Um, the local people in Hudsprate and just see what they think about it as well. If ever I get a chance to, I'll definitely let everybody know, but I think it really helps them to know there's people out there that care. And definitely, if, if you're watching Diane, thank you so much for writing such a fantastic article. Getting it on the front page. We couldn't have asked better for that, or better than that. Creeping in. And they have a Facebook page and they want everybody to pop in. Sorry? Facebook page? Canyon have Facebook page? Oh, do they? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so apparently they have a Facebook page, Kruger to Canyon. For anybody that wants to read the article, I did put the link on www.juma.com under blogs and it's under Rhino Donations We Made from Page. It's a very easy title. So if you go and click on that, you'll get the link. There's also the link there to uh, the fireside chat that we did um, with the two organisations that came in, Ari and Philip, who joined me. Very interesting people. I'm not seeing any sign of these elephants. We 
shall have a quick look by the den, see if there's any youngsters out, and then swing up towards where we left Shivambalana. Seems as it's, I can't believe it's nearly an hour to go. It's crazy. Sorry. Very, very cold. Where did the time go? Where? Is that from? Oh, from you. Oh, Yaku's joining in. <laughs> so Yaku's giving his uh, zebra fact that zebra are being used to help bring back the extinct guaca. Guaca. I think it's pronounced guaca. I always, I always struggle with that one. Ooh, looky, looky, we have a hyena. Guaca. Is that how you pronounce it, Yaku? Seems it's an Afrikaans word. Quacha. 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 But um, that is true. And in fact, I think the project is down in the Cape. And they have actually bred one of them. They've got one already. I think this is Teddy's mom. Can't believe I, I had quite a weird moment the other night with Teddy. Teddy looked so much smaller in the spotlight, and so did the other two. And I was convinced we had new new hyenas at the den. It was the weirdest thing. They really just just looked so small. And then when they came up to say hello, it was like, nope, they are definitely the hyena. <laughs> that we've come to know and love. She should really tell people about the... Stations and BC Kaya is active. Hello, lady. But you're not Teddy's mum, are you? Or are you? Teddy's following you like you are. Oh no, it is. I can see the scar. Hello, little one. <laughs> I bet you're battling with the heat as well. Remember when you were so small you couldn't climb over the log? I can't even remember him being that age. I keep saying him. I keep wanting to say him, but I'm sure but it's, it's a I'm female. I'm sure it's a female. Just the behaviour. Yeah. I think I keep trying to call it him because it's just like Seb and full of nonsense. <laughs> so I don't really mean it. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> Standing by. There, standing by. Sorry, Andrew, you cut out. Yeah, I do now. Um, myself and Graham, he was Lalapan's. Uh, just if you follow Void Teller Access, you'll see uh, just before you get to Aubrey's Road some tracks going off into the bush, and he was lying next to the road. No, I'm actually going to be heading up that way soon.
In fact, the more I think about it, the more Teddy is actually like Seb. <laughs> <laughs> it's only just occurred to me. That's obviously why I keep trying to call it a male. <laughs> you want to sleep and Seb's there. <laughs> Wanting to play. Bunch of dirty dishes in the sink. Yeah. <laughs> Seb, if you're watching, now I know. <laughs> you've been giving Teddy lessons. Or have you been learning from Teddy? I don't know. <laughs> what did you see, Teddy? Nah, Mum. I don't want a bath. Can we say hello? When we first saw Teddy, couldn't she couldn't climb over that log. Yeah. She had to go around it. I can't even remember that 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 size, eh? I really can't. She's definitely got that, that very bright spot just on her rump. She's still got it. I remember seeing that about a month and a half, two months ago. On the right side? Yeah. yeah. It's very light. Yeah, I've got it in my head. Why don't you go and lie in mud, missus? I want to relieve you. Yeah, that is Teddy's mum. Hi, Jody, and good afternoon to you. Wanting to know where are the male hyenas? They're around, we just don't see them. Um, they can occasionally be a ba become a babysitter, but what we've seen with this clan is one of the mothers tends to be babysitter if there's any babysitters around. Sometimes there's no babysitters, sometimes the cubs are left to their own devices in the safety of the, the tunnels in the den, of the den. Yeah, I want some food, Ma. <laughs> But we have possibly seen them out and about. Um, you know, if we bump into a hyena on the road, for example, it is possible that that's one of the males. But there's not really any reason for them to be around the den. And the reason why there is a communal den is, is really for the cubs. But otherwise, the hyenas can sleep out in the bush, as we've seen on a number of occasions just finding a hyena sleeping. Like Floppy here today, she might have been there all day. It could be that she comes back, she feeds the cubs and then goes again and she goes out foraging tonight. So she possibly doesn't spend that much time here. And remember we were going through a few, a couple of months where we were wondering what's happened to Floppy here and, and we even thought maybe she's died. Um, but obviously those cubs and the say forgetting that we'd actually seen Floppy here previously and, and and nursing those cubs because um, I was convinced that she was one of the mothers and then she just disappeared and it could just be that we were just coming here at the wrong times to see her and we were seeing a lot of Teddy's mum because Teddy is quite small so Teddy's going to be needing milk on a much more regular basis than what her cubs are being that much older But what I have come to realise is actually they don't grow that rapidly. Not com sort of even compared to the leopards. If you think about how big the leopards are over the the year, and how big floppy ears cubs are over the year, they've not really grown. And I think that's you know why I thought they were a couple of months younger than what they were, because of this there, there was just very little size difference. And even now between Teddy and the almost year year old cubs there's not that much size difference so they're very slow growing which is something I never realised until fairly recently
Who is that? Patty! Good to hear from you, Patty. Yeah, um, Teddy's mum does... I, I noticed she, or she did have a bit of a cut on her leg. I did notice that. does look like it is healing, though. And that scar, excuse me, a, a, just over the top of her back is quite a nice identifying feature. As well as her ears. I forgot her ears because there's the other female who doesn't have any notches in her ears. So we have to be a little bit careful because if she's in a fight or anything, that will change. This one, she does have a little bit of pink, actually. If you look at her lip, there's quite a lot of pink on her lip. And certainly, as I say, that's stripe across the back but if you look actually now that Teddy's with with mum look at the difference in the coat Teddy the, the fur is much longer than mum and much, and much darker you see the spots very black and with age they do tend to fade and with age just like the buffaloes the adults do start to become quite thin um, or they start to bold almost. Their, their fur definitely starts to thin out and become much shorter. Just like the old buffaloes as they get older. And that's one of the reasons, just going back to why they're called Duggar Boys, that's one of the reasons why they do need to, to put mud over their body to protect their skin from the sun. You don't really see hyenas actually rolling over in the mud. Don't really see that. I think they still have enough fur on their, their bodies to actually protect them. They just use the mud for cooling purposes. And feeding bouts can last an hour, hour and a half sometimes. But now Teddy's over four months old now. They are going to become less. Or less frequent. Okay. Well, I do want to head up towards where Shvambalana was. See if we can't find the lady. What I'd love to know, actually, is if the leopards and the hyenas recognise each other. And with them growing up in the same area, the same the same animals will interact at some stage, and I do wonder that that relationship. I mean floppy ear seems to be pretty relaxed around the leopards nowadays. It was almost as if she was babysitting the other day. If you remember Sh Shavinzi wasn't too far away from where floppy ear was laying. We've seen floppy ear at the base of the tree and barely even bat an eyelid when Karoo leaves the tree. But put a piece of meat in the mix, you see very different animals. <laughs> I'm glad we got to catch up with Teddy and Mum. Alright lady, we're going to leave you in peace. Thank you so much. Bye bye Teddy. Seb will be back soon. Actually just on that, Seb is not able to get a flight back tomorrow. He can only come back on Saturday. So he's going to be here Saturday afternoon.
stations leaving and BC Kaya active. Uh, one Mafazi, one Mampimpan open lot. I always think Gunda can make it up there. What a nice grey sky! Let's show you this. Every time I've driven past these thorns, they, I keep thinking I must stop here. Because these thorns almost look like those of a camel thorn. But it's not a camel thorn. But the swelling of the thorns... I can actually climb over. the thorns will swell because of ants using them as refuges. But I can't see anything here to say that's what's going on. Because this looks like it actually looks like a sweet thorn but it's not. Oh, there's a beetle. Did you see the beetle? I saw something drop down. Yeah. Just in front this of the one, camera. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, that's the one I'm on. This one's split over. I'm sure something must be living in here though. This one's split open. You're talking about a case of Japanoloba? Um, oh, no. Aerioloba. Aerioloba. Okay, because Japanoloba also, the, the, the ants only live in the holes that are drilled by the lava of a moth first. No. No, they. It's a cocktail ant. Yeah. Mm. It's not the... That's the whistling thorn up in East Africa. Oh, okay. Just trying to remember which species of ants it is now. I know cocktail ants is one, but there's another one. I'll have to look it up again, I forget. But I harvest the scaled insects as well. But this oh. one... Yeah, but a lot of them, there's a gland on the base of the petiolule. Or rather, where the petiolule breaks into its leaflet. There's normally a gland that's secretes sugar that attracts the ants that helps protect the tree. Actually it could be a sweet thorn. It's, I mean the bark's red enough. Because I'm not seeing any any little processes for the ankle thorn. So it's just odd, and I'm just wondering if that one does have either an insect in there or... I mean, it's the only one here as well. I mean, look at those. Huge. Actually, I think that's got to be one of my favourite acacias, is the camel thorn. Um, do you know what species of acacia that is? No. Uh. Abnormal specimen. Very abnormal. Yeah, there is there's something funny going on with them though. Hey, you see, I wonder, that looks, oh no, that's a flaky bark. Unless it is a flaky bark. Just an odd looking flaky bark. I mean, it's not really the right place for a sweet thorn. It's... Unless that's a particular nutritious spot. You tend to find them closer to river lines. I know that's in a drainage line, but that doesn't really get that much water. Hmm. Yeah, good 
afternoon to you, Tommy. Welcome on board. And thank you very much for the picture the other day. I don't know if you saw, I did put it up as my pro, um, profile for my public page. Me and my element, he actually wants to get a picture of you and Seb, actually, Mark. Of us all in our elements before we go. But wanting to know, how do we know it's a female if they have genitalia that looks like a male? That's the problem, Tommy. We actually don't know. Um, females tend to be a lot more boisterous and dominating the males. And that's because they've got a lot of testosterone in the body. And that's possibly why they have male genitalia it's because of this high level of testosterone abnormally high level of testosterone in the body is possible and that's possibly through competition for food there may be something else underlying I know I was reading something the other day that it might not just be for food com or over competition for food it might be something else as well so the combination and I think sometimes it is a combination of factors rather than just one factor. But certainly, there is some reason or another to have this high level of testosterone. And the female actually having what looks to be male genitalia, but it is actually female genitalia, it's just elongated. And they still mate through that. Now that's got to be something to see. Apparently the male sort of has to try and almost sit underneath her. And once, and once he's actually um, connected to her, then he can actually stand on his back legs again. But yeah, quite a, a difficult process. The males very much subordinate to the females. The highest ranking male is still lower than the lowest ranking female. Matriarchal society, and that's one of the reasons why we don't see males around. We'd rather keep out the way of the females. But if they are going to mate, they'll actually approach the female and they'll sort of bow down to her almost and, and wait for her to to say he can approach otherwise if he doesn't wait then he could end up with quite a nasty fight on his hands is there any station with the man pans? very interesting is if a male is born to the matriarch or a very high ranking female he may stay slightly longer than other males of lower ranking females lower ranking females they may move away from the den maybe two or three years of age but if they born to higher ranking females they may have the privilege of staying that little bit longer maybe about four four years old three or four so they grow in size and because of, of that, when they do eventually head out into the world, they might have a little bit more attitude than males who leave at a younger age who have to fend for themselves. And if that's the case, if they, they are a little bit more aggressive, they tend to be a little bit bolder in their attitude and they may get more matings because of it because they are a little bit more um, sure of themselves so they may actually secure more matings because of it it's almost like he who dares wins Oh, 
looky, 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 we got a kitty cat on the road. Oh, well, we did have a kitty cat on the road. Come back. Don't run away. Come here. Who are you? Where are you going to, little one? Hello. I'm going to lie down there. Are <laughs> you trying to hide? Hello. Okay. See you there. I think I know who this is. Guessing time number two. Questions at gmail.com. Who is it? Try and turn around. Stations are relocated. One month in Pan uh, heading east along the way. Yeah. Has any guesses come through yet? Another one. What you got your eye on? Roy and Binky saying Shavinzi. That was fifty fifty. <laughs> it's actually just very funny trying to hear Yaku saying their names. It took me probably a good week to get the names down. But who was saying the last one? Joanne, Joanne, spot on. Right spot, left spot, spot on. It is Shivan Balana again. And I wonder if he's going to either go to Gary Dam to drink or whether he's going to try his luck. I was hoping it might have been his sister. So it'd be nice to see her. Can you see him? Or are we too high? He's listening to something in the grass. Yeah. I don't want to go and disturb him. Now. As long as we can see him. I was hoping we were just going to tip over the edge there. What do you notice, boy? I say I don't want it. No. <laughs> I wonder if it was something small. Whatever it was didn't hold his attention. <laughs> Let's 
start up and roll down a little bit. Hmm. I'm just giving him a lot of sweat. We're actually quite a good distance from him. We'll see. Being on his own, he is a little bit wary. So I don't want to interfere with what he's doing. I think just getting a little bit of a fright earlier is just putting him on edge a little bit. You see, he keeps looking over the, the grass stalks. How's the picture looking, Yaku? Is it, is it alright back that side? We are getting quite dark now. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> oh, oh, look who's just popped out. <gasps> and she just got a head start of him. Stations, uh, I've got both my pan heading east towards quarantine open area. Yeah. <laughs> 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 poised. <laughs> it's almost as if she's watching and making sure he's not going to pounce on the back. <laughs> Gonna come and get you, Shabinji. Look rather up to mischief. There he comes. Oy, come on, Gunda, Gunda. Can you see over there? I can't zoom in while you're driving. So. Mm. Well, as long as you can see over the bonnet. Uh, she's calling. Chuffing. I can't see her that well. I, think it's I just thought it think. might have been Shivinzi, but yeah, it could well be. It's it's really that. Yeah. Could well be. Yeah, yeah. She, just, she just looks very small, unless he's just very big now. No, that is that must be Shivinzi. Let me just see. Yeah, no, that is Shivinzi. No. Yeah, look how big he is compared to her. Yeah, but she doesn't behave like that. Cause no, she's tiny. No, that is. It is Shivinzi. I wonder why she was calling, though. You're on all the gain and everything. I'm on every, I'm down to 25. Open it 
that can be. Hi Peter, good afternoon to you over there in the Netherlands. Asking if it's difficult for leopards to hunt in the thick vegetation. Um, not really, in fact the thick vegetation can help them, help conceal them. The thick vegetation can work in their favour. Wild dog, they can struggle. Does wild dog hunt differently? I thought he'd seen something there. Going behind the log there. I'm going to try and get into another open spot that we can see her. I missed where he went now. There he is. Looks like they are slowly making their way towards the open area. Can you see her? Yeah, it does actually. He's just he's just turned. Just saw him turn. Looked like he was heading that way. Oh, there she is. She's also heading towards. Don't go in there, guys. We can't follow you. Jack. Oh, that's very thick in there. There she goes. Wanting to know how far we are from Induna's Impala Kill. Um, probably a good five, five, ten minutes drive. I'd actually forgotten about that. I wanted to go and check in there this morning. I don't know if anyone has. Let me just find out. Can you see through the branch there? The one on your, on Gary Catron. Yeah. It was gone yesterday already. Oh, was it gone yesterday already? Oh, okay. Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. Okay, let me move again. I'm going to try and catch them again in another opening. In case you're not hearing Mark, he was saying that Graham seemed to think it had gone yesterday. I haven't heard anyone talk about it. So usually if there's something like that around, people do go and check it out. That's why I didn't even think to go and check there because I haven't heard anything on the radio this morning. But that's on Gowrie Cook Line, right up in the north, and we're close to FC. So it would actually be quicker if we could just go in a straight, straight line. It would be much quicker. But unfortunately, we can't. Where are you cabbies going? Are you coming to us? Are we babysitting tonight, guys? Try and go. Can I go in there? Let's see if we can pick them up this side again. Just depends on how far in they've gone. If they're sticking to the edge, we might be able to pick them up again. Oh, that didn't sound nice. Part of the drainage line that runs right around the back of the front of control. Grand Grand Come in. The stations have uh, lost vision of these two mumping pans, uh, gone into the Schlatine just east of Gallego shortcut towards the drainage line uh, towards staff compound. Oh, sorry, Mark.
a night jar flying by. The rate they were walking, they shouldn't be too long to get to this spot. But it is possible they just found a nice place just to either lie down in there or they changed direction and they went up north. They've obviously got little pathways. I was hoping they would come this way though. They're out on the road behind us. You never know, they might have just popped out again. Funny knack of doing that. It's funny, some days I don't mind having company, some days they rather not be bothered. Did you hear that? Yeah, I did hear something. No, I mean woodlands. So it's woodlands I've heard. Oh, no, I didn't hear the word. I heard something. And I heard a um, purple crested Nuri oh. the other day. You did? I did. Because I thought I saw it on the other day in a jackalberry. Because I thought I was going to do Lally. Well, you are, but that's well, yeah. got, nothing else, that's got nothing to do with it. Okay, I think we need to move again. It doesn't look like they're going to come this side. Yeah, no, I thought, I really thought I was do Lally. I thought, how am I hearing a purple crested blurry? But, apparently we do have them. It's going to go a little I'm bit deeper. I think so, I think it is on the checklist. Well, I can't imagine why they wouldn't come up the drainage line. Yeah, I Stand think River. I think it did actually, it sounded like it was in the back, back of camp. But as I say, it was just one of those, I heard it and it didn't register until a few moments afterwards. I was like, hold on a minute. It's like I've heard gorgeous bush strike in camp. Have you? Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't even know what they sound like, I've never heard one. Oh, okay. Kitty kitty kitties! Got some catnip for you to play with. No, I don't really. By now they have FC or Hmm? By now they have FC or in. Well, they might be. I've never been in here before. I haven't either. I didn't even know this bit existed. No, did I. Graham Secret Road. The back of the car. Ah, it's actually a little little pathway oh, here. There's an eye there. Uh, the dead tree, below that dead tree on the right, straight ahead. Yeah, I was seeing, I was seeing light flickering light. back there. It's straight ahead, there was an eye. I think it's the fence. This is how you get here. Okay. Now I know. Me too. I never seen this before. Because I was actually trying to get here the other day. It's a good job I didn't get here the other day. Because that's how we found Shivambalana that day. Ah. Andrew's been here and I wonder how he got in here Ah, yeah, because there's a big donga there. Because that little drainage line we just came around the back of runs just there. So we're actually at the back of Graham's, Graham's house. The fence. We could try, but I think we're going to be too tall. Uh, drop that tent. Well, we can give it a go.
I spy Yaku's car? I think that's what we were seeing. Yeah, I'm not, I think you might have to take the camera off, eh? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That could be a fun experience. Oh, I just saw lightning. Uh, the big one coming. Hmm? The big one coming. Yeah, it is. Are you going to take the camera off and drop the aerial, or should okay, we go back? So. <laughs> okay, well, let's go back then. I'm walking to it. We're going to weigh up. Taking everything off, dropping that tunnel, and just going all the way around. Yeah, I think we'll just go Frankly, all the way around. Well, that's what I'm thinking. We might actually bump into them. Hopefully not, literally. Have I got room to spin there? Yeah. We might even be walking in the drainage line at this, at this point. Oh. So Yako, keep a look out for the cubbies coming your way. Let me know if you do see them. Huh. You learn something new every day. While we've been debating whether to go underneath or over or round, but the cubbies have come out, run over to quarantine area, and given us the slip. Is there any more? How's that little boy doing? Uh, should I get hold of you? I did have both of them briefly, but um, ow. But I've actually lost them now into the drainage line, just the back of your old house. <laughs> yeah, I just try to relocate them. They went from Voya to the Access. Ah, just got them. Are <laughs> come down to the south quarter area? Um, I'm just actually on that little two track that leads to the back of your old house. Okay, he's sitting down now. Can you see him in there? Yeah. There was also one Mafazi at Treehouse Dam only as well. And I've got uh, the Mampimpans, Grudel's Mampimpans, just off of Voyatella Access. I got got by the thorn. What's that little boy again? The little boy, I can't see him too well. Where's your sister? Where did she go? Oh, I just heard something. Got there an insect leaving the branch. Uh, Graham, you should get my mover now and directly opposite you. Is it going down the donga? Yeah, I'm just on the western side. Oh, sorry, eastern side.
close it. He's just literally just behind this quarry here. You might need to go a bit further forward, yeah. I don't know where she is, she was with him. But they I lost them in this donga here. No I know. <laughs> Me professional? Never. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, what I can maybe try and do. Are you, are you sure? Yeah. I can try and move a little bit. Yeah, she was actually, she, um, she came out ahead of him, um, he greeted her and then they both came down, down the road and then both went in slightly different parts of the bush. she is she's here she's coming up I just saw her she just saw a flash of her eyes yeah she's she's literally just in the donga there with him I just saw her eyes okay no worries can you see her moving there Mark? yeah sit back to him Actually, I wonder if we can squeeze in amongst here. Possible. Let's give it a go. I'm just going to try and squeeze in down here if we can. We're going to... Try not to shine his eye too much. I think the temperature must be just slightly cooler in the drainage line. I grant him. So I was hoping we were going to get just slightly closer to where Shavinzi was. I think we'll leave them. Looks like they're pretty settled now. But worth a try. We've got ten minutes. Let's go and do a lap around the quarantine area.
Actually, that's not too bad through there. Yeah. You see through that? A little bit back again. A little bit back? Yeah, but you just roll forward, yeah. That's right. So when? Inch, good. Almost, yeah, okay. There. Shadow. Yeah, I think so, eh? <laughs> Shit, I'm just, I can't believe how much he's grown. He definitely is. He must be just not far off Karula. I'd still say he's probably just a couple of inches shorter than she is, but not much. Leopard shadow puppets. <laughs> I'm trying to hold the spotlight as steady as I can. I wonder if his sister's pulling faces at him. <laughs> Looks like it. I was gonna go and pounce on her. <laughs> oh no! Oh, there was crazy. something there. Just pull forward. Baby was complaining, so I don't think he got it. Oh, there. Yeah, definitely got away. Can you see can you see it through the bush there? I'm looking in the light. I can't see it with my eyes. I'm trying to find it with your light. Is it in, in that tree? Yeah, it's coming down. It's oh there he is. No look this time the other one. There. Straight in yes, the I see. Yeah. <laughs> bush baby won the day today. But now it's not moving again. Yeah, it's, it's actually just behind this little deadwood in front of us. <laughs> wonder if it was actually on the ground. little primates are there. I think it jumped. Oh no, there it is. Oh, that's a nice one if we can get it. Can you see it right on the end? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. The little bush baby. That was what he was after. Do you have it on your list? Nope. <laughs> but I'd already said the name before. But I said it when it was shouting. I was wanting again. I was wanting to get it. So I'm keeping an eye on, on uh, where shivambalana has gone there. I don't know if you're actually hearing it, but it's like tip, 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 tip. <laughs> Oh we're not 
might maybe be able to see it jump swaying up that tree behind. There we go. <laughs> Ledwood's in the way. <laughs> At least we managed to get a nice view of it. Lesser bush baby. Oh well. Never mind, Shivambalana. Tomorrow is another day. I'm try and move back again. Okay. We'll head out onto the open area. See if there is anything walking around there. Before saying goodbye. The reason why I switched off all the lights when I realised he was actually hunting was just to try and not sway what was going on there. So I actually thought he was pouncing on his sister. we would just seen a little bit earlier. Although I'm actually quite glad he didn't catch the bush baby really. I'm sure Karula's gonna find something for them. But not a bush baby. Oh. Okay, I'm not gonna put the light on those. There's a, a baby in parlor quite far from the herd. It needs to be careful, especially with the cubs being so close as well. Oh wow. Really got a, quite a big electrical storm pulling in. Stations uh, I'm leaving uh, the two mumping pans in the drainage line, uh, lost visual, still in the drainage line, uh, open lock. Zebra out there. I'm trying to get just past these trees here so we can really have a nice look at that lightning. Unfortunately, the Impala are right on that spot that would be perfect. But I don't want to uh, interfere with them. Seeing eyes, lots of eyes. Ooh. More impala. Sure, they're all spread out tonight. I think this is possibly a good place to start tomorrow. These impala are all spread out. Another baby there. And there is a big storm coming. I wonder if that's why the cubs have made their way this side. Look at this. My word. I just need the sound of hyena. Woo!
Ooh, that was nice. Did you get that? Straight ahead of us. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. because it's mostly black screen and odd bit of light coming through. Oh, is it? Yeah. I was hoping... I mean, I'm getting most of it because I'm quite wide. Yeah. But just tell everybody that it's not a picture problem. We're just waiting for things like that. Yeah, beautiful. I'm starting to hear thunder now. Mm, I heard the first clap. There's trees in the way. There's a lot of lightning going on down there. This is uh, what me and Seb were doing the other night. We were actually where those impala were. And just taking pictures. Long exposures. As the lightning was pulling in. And that, that picture that I've been putting up on Wirecast. That came from that night. Give it another half an hour and we're going to be seeing some fantastic lightning bolts coming this way. But unfortunately it has come time to say goodbye. But a pretty spectacular way to say goodbye with all the lightning. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. And I hope you can join us again tomorrow morning at 5.30 Central Africa time. Where Mark will be heading out. I'll be behind the camera. And somebody will be sitting in the directing seat. Somebody from the lodge. As I say, Seb's only coming back on Saturday. He'll be back for Saturday afternoon. But for myself and the rest of the crew, and all the animals from here at Juma Game Reserve that we've seen this afternoon. Take care, and we'll see you again here on the Juma Live Drives. Bye, everybody. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we were live for that. <laughs>